Hi everyone, I'm Alex Schmeekin, one of the artist residents at the Iowa Ceramic Center and Glass Studio, and today I'm going to be teaching you all how to throw a coffee pour over and also trim it. So to start off, I'm using about two pounds of clay, more or less, and I'm just centering like I normally would. And I always like to cone up and down a few times just to get the clay warmed up. And I do wedge a lot, but it's nice just to do a little bit more wheel wedging to go along with that. And some tips for when you're doing that and when you're pulling up into the cone, um, you want to kind of use the bottom edge of your palms and kind of like press directly with your hands across from each other to bring that clay up. And then I'm just kind of flattening it down with my hands in my regular centering position, which I'm kind of blocking. But um, yeah, and then just cleaning up the the size a little bit. So then first I'm making the indentation, just a little bit of one, but then I'm going to remember <laughs> to go in and kind of separate out the bottom part of the pour over from the top part. So I'm going to kind of want to have that extra um, little edge sticking out that's going to be kind of the part that goes over top the cup. So you kind of want to reserve some clay down below for that and then squeeze in above that just using the bottom edge of my hand. And then now I'm just going down and opening. And so I don't go down all the way. Um, I end up carving the hole later when I do my trimming. And so basically I'm just kind of going to first aim for a tall cylinder. And then I'm going to shape it into more of a funnel shape. So I'm just doing those pulls nice and slow and steady. If it gets a little wobbly, it's not too much of a big deal. You just got to remember to breathe, brace your arms, squeeze that clay, and slowly move up. And my, so I do the left hand on the inside, right hand on the outside. My left hand, I kind of like to have my thumb on the outside too. I feel like that just helps me stabilize things. And so I'm really just trying to get that clay up from the bottom because that's going to be the narrowest part of the form. And at this point, you can start going out. You kind of want to save the like shaping the um, pour over to go out until the end because you want to just focus on getting that height first and that keeps it from getting too wide too fast. So you want to save that part of the shaping for the end. So here I'm just doing a little bit more pulling while I'm doing my shaping just to really try to thin things out because I don't want to have a super chunky, heavy pour over. And you can also kind of use your fingers and go both up and down to kind of just smooth things out and get the clay um, to be nice and even. Not doing too much pressure though. And I tend to throw these way bigger than I think I need them to be. Um, you want to keep in mind the dimensions of like a standard mug is about like three inches wide or so, um, maybe four. It really just depends on the kind of mug you're making it for or if you're making it for like a pitcher or something like that. Um, and so the first couple I ever threw were, were really, really tiny. <laughs> so you want to kind of maybe play around making a couple different sizes and record in your notebook what dimensions you threw them at how much clay you used, and then kind of see functionally what, what ends up working the best for you. Because it also just depends on how much coffee you want to make. And so I really like smoothing out the profile of the piece with a wooden rib. I find that it's really just, I like getting the, most of the throwing rings out and just making it nice and smooth. And the key with that is to make sure you're supporting um, with your hand on the inside, as well as like pushing into the rib. And then here I'm just cleaning up the bottom part. Um, you can add in like a little moat if you want to catch anything that drips or just kind of make it a nice clean, um, just a nice clean profile. And then here I'm measuring, I shoot for about four and a half inches wide um, and then I'll make a little dish to go with it that it'll fit into. Cause that way when it's still dripping coffee, you can put it into something without getting coffee everywhere. And just clean that up a little bit. All right, and you might notice that the side, um, the rim of the cup kind of matches the width of the base of the piece. So that's kind of something just like aesthetically that I find that I tend to do a lot. So there we go. But I'm just going to let that dry for a while. Yep. All right. So now we're moving on to the trimming stage. I've wired them off um, uh, the bat for a little bit and let them dry upside down. And I tend to wire off when it's a nice soft leather hard because then it's not too squishy. It's not going to get mushed or anything. Um, and I'm just feeling how thick the bottom is and how thick the sides of the bore over are too because I can kind of trim both of those spots. And so then now I'm just centering like I normally do, just resting my finger on the side and seeing where that gap is, pushing towards the gap. 
key is to keep your finger really stable and steady at this point. And you kind of let the clay push your finger out, and then you keep it however far out it pushed you, and then you see where there's the gap after that. And then here I'm grabbing my clay lugs. I make sure there's some nice soft clay, but not too sticky because I don't want to stick my pot. And notice how I'm just smearing the clay down into the wheel head and not up against the pot. I find that this helps uh, prevent warping and so that you don't deform anything and make it into a little triangle. And it stays on pretty well. They kind of just act like little door stops that way. And then now we're going to go in with my small loop tool. I like to use the rectangular side. And I'm just cleaning up the side a little bit and just getting that nice and rounded. I'm also just going to go ahead and measure how much clay I have to work with here. Kind of like I mentioned when I was throwing it, I don't want to get to go too narrow because I want these to sit on top of a mug instead of going inside of them. So I try to keep them around like four and a half ish inches wide. And then I also am about to make a little flange, like the part that's going to stick down into the mug. And I find this helps keep the pour over sitting on top of the mug and um, also is a nice kind of backup system for if any uh, coffee is kind of dripping weirdly out of your funnel shape, which you'll see in a little bit how I'm going to do that. But so first I'm just taking off some excess clay. And the nice thing is that you can really directly feel how thick that area is and I tend to take off a fair amount um, just because I don't want it to be super heavy. And you can also trim underneath that part to smooth that out as well. So I find definitely that the trimming side of things is a lot more time consuming than the throwing side of things. So now I'm going to start working on the middle part of the base and I'm just taking a little bit more clay around right next to that little flange so that there's going to be this nice little part that sticks into the cup from the bottom. And then I'm going to go in with a little loop tool and start um, taking away even more clay. I find that it's helpful to use a smaller tool for this part since it's just like so refined and um, it's a little sharper and just works a little bit better. And at this point you might notice that the clay is starting to get a little bit softer because you're getting to that interior part that hasn't really had time to dry out. You can always um, use a heat gun or something like that to firm it up a little bit better. That's what I do for some of mine when I want to trim them, but they're a little bit wet still. So I'll kind of trim, heat gun, trim, heat gun. And so at this point I am just kind of taking off some clay. I'm trying to make a nice little like cone funnel shape in the center and I'm going to be putting a hole right in the middle where my finger is right now. But um, I'm just kind of taking off excess clay you can feel from the outside um, and just kind of feel how much clay you have left. At this point I'm just really trying to lighten it up. starting to put the hole through to the middle and I tend to make it about a finger width wide but first I just focus on going all the way down and then I see that it's wide enough um, and I find that helpful because then you can actually kind of feel around from the inside and feel how much clay you actually have left in the bottom and how much more you can take off and um, as long as the edge of the funnel is nice and sharp it'll uh, pour really well and it won't leak onto the sides of your pour over and down the side of your mug. So I find that just having a nice sharp funnel is the way to go. And I'm just kind of taking out the bulk of the clay and then I'll really work on smoothing it out.
All right, everyone, so here is what it looks like finished. I just do my little initials on the side with one of my little ball tools and just gently peel away those lugs. Be careful with the bottom because it might be a little bit on the soft side. And yeah, so that's pretty much what it looks like. So it's a nice little funnel and kind of like a funnel within a funnel. And uh, yeah, and you can just pick out all the boogers, smooth the inside out with a sponge if you want. If things got a little ragged in there, that's always a good option. And then the next thing to do is to make sure that it fits with one of the plates that I made. And it looks pretty good. We don't want it to be too loose, but we want it to be able to wiggle around a little bit, especially because the glaze will add a little bit of thickness. So now at this point, I'm just going to let everything dry slow. You can always put on some surface design if you want. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.